Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how you go from this to this. Stay tuned. Okay guys, first off, this is gonna be a quick video and I'm gonna need you to stick around through the length of it because I actually took the time to document from when I was dropping seeds in these raised beds to now having okra plants that is producing okra. Okra plants are actually great for raised beds or containers because they don't require that much space and they actually enjoy the loose, rich soil a raised bed provides. You can expect okra plants to grow up to four to five feet tall at full maturity and they do need at least six hours of sun, but they do great in full sun. Okra plants do enjoy nitrogen, which is why in a few moments I'm going to show you just before I dropped my seeds in how I added a layer of rich organic compost and throughout the season I do like to add some fish emulsion fertilizer, something that's a little more immediate and quickly absorbed. I do like to keep it as organic on the channel as possible. That's why I use this Neptune's Harvest Fish Emulsion Fertilizer for organic gardening. The link will be in the description for this if you want to check it out. I made another video a few weeks ago about how to use this in the garden. But if you want to keep it simple and just broadcast out a triple tin or something balanced, that will do the job as well. Now, believe it or not, okra plants do really well naturally in dry, arid climates. However, I'm watering mine every single day because I'm growing in raised beds and the soil drains so fast. If I were growing these plants in the ground or maybe in some kind of heavier growing medium, I probably would have to back off the watering because if I didn't, it could lead to root rot. This is a very popular crop here in the south, zone seven. I'm in Shelby, North Carolina. And that's because they enjoy our clay soil that is slightly acidic. So for all you soil nerds out there, you're probably going to want to land your pH around five and a half to six. All right, so let's flash back to around the middle of May. This is after the last frost and you can see me hoeing back and forth my raised bed, getting the soil nice and level. From there, I took the corner of my hoe and I made a row down the length of the eight foot bed around three or four inches deep. And this is where I'm going to be dropping the okra seed. Now at the time I was sharing this bed with some cantaloupe plants, but I could have easily dug out three more rows in this eight by four foot raised bed. From there, I took a bag of stout ollie compost. Doesn't have to be stout ollie compost. It could be cow manure. You could use mushroom compost, just some kind of rich organic compost medium and I spread a small layer down the road just for good measure and then I started dropping my seeds every few inches. So okra plants really need more than just a few inches apart. They actually need to be spaced 10 to 12 inches apart but I like to put extra seeds just in case there's bad germination. You can always go back and thin them out later. I then used my hands to cover up the row and then the most important part I had to water the seeds in and yes I had to opt for the watering can because this is before I had my water line ran down to the garden. Keep in mind it is extremely vital to keep seedlings and seeds that you're trying to germinate moist at all times. If they dry out they will die. So you can see that some of the stalks have already grown to about five or six inches tall and then some of the seeds are just now germinating. So what I may end up having to do is pull up the smaller ones and move the larger ones over a bit. That way I have them equally spaced somewhere around a foot apart. It's great to plant a lot of ochre close together. That way in case you have bad germination, you can fill in the gaps later on. But ochre stalks generally need more room than that and this really pains me to do it but it's going to be in the best interest in the long run so i'm going to go ahead and pull up the ones that are in between these two stalks that way i have them equally spaced and this is these are now probably 10 to 12 inches apart and that's more of what i'm going for you definitely don't want ochre plants growing too close together and competing with each other Next, I'm going to pull up some of these bigger ones and put over here where it didn't come up so well. 
So here we go, nice and gently. I'm gonna pull up this one. Saving as much root as I can. And I'm gonna pull up this one as well. Now I'm gonna pull up these little guys and plant my two big plants that I just pulled up into the gaps. All done. Now I have thinned out my okra so they're all about I'd say 10 inches to a foot apart and these will give them nice proper spacing so they can grow healthy and strong. Now with any newly transplanted plants it's always a good idea to water them in that way you minimize any risk of transplant shock. <laughs> Okay, fast forward six weeks till present day and we've been harvesting okra for about a week now. As you can see, the pods are coming in nice and strong. Finally, let's talk about pollination and harvesting. Okra flowers are actually self-pollinating because they have both male and female parts. With that said, the flowers on these plants are so beautiful, they do attract pollinators and cross-pollination will still occur. The flowers will turn into pods very, very quickly, and you wanna make sure you're cutting your okra off the stem when they're very small. Do not let them get long. All right, let's see here. This is an example of a pod that has gotten too long. You can see this is probably already six or seven inches long. They become really tough at this stage, really slimy, and this is not gonna be good for cooking. All right, let's find a pod that's young. Here we go. This is a pod that's only maybe three or four inches long, and this is perfect. This is gonna be way more tender. It's not woody, it's gonna be less slimy. So this is good, this is bad. All right guys, there you go. How to grow okra from seed to harvest. We do a good bit of garden tutorials on this channel. So if you like this video, would you consider subscribing to the channel, smashing that like button, and until next time, become a plant person.